Hey there, it's Elizabeth O'Brien from Grammar Revolution, where we help you teach and learn grammar the easy way with sentence diagrams. And today I am answering a reader's question. And this question comes from Jess. So Jess writes, Hi Elizabeth. Hi Jess. Do you have any advice for teaching about and eradicating my grammar pet peeve, comma splices? I always spend a bit of time on this with my advanced classes, but it's always so frustrating. Do you have any good ideas? Jess. That is an awesome question. So if you don't already know, a comma splice is a punctuation mistake, and it happens when you join two independent clauses with just a comma. Here are two examples. The students wanted indoor recess. The teachers wanted outdoor recess. And my mother loves baking. She just made brownies. In order to teach people how to avoid comma splices, we need to go over the necessary background information. And that means covering, one, independent clauses, two, compound sentences, and then three, we can get to comma splices. Okay, so let's start with uh, subject number one, which is independent clauses. An independent clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb, and it can stand alone as a complete thought or a complete idea. Here's an example. The students wanted indoor recess. Now, I'm putting up a sentence diagram here also of that sentence. If you don't know what sentence diagrams are, don't worry about it. Just follow along with me and take in whatever you can. So the students wanted indoor recess. We have a subject, students, that tells us whom or what the sentence is about. We have a verb, wanted. The verb tells us what the subject is or is doing. And that group of words can stand alone as a complete thought. Here's another one. The teachers wanted outdoor recess. We have a subject, teachers, we have a verb, wanted, and it can stand alone as a complete thought. Okay, topic number two, which is compound sentences. Compound sentences are sentences that are made up of two or more independent clauses. Here's an example. The students wanted indoor recess. The teachers wanted outdoor recess. Notice we have a semicolon between the two clauses. That's one way that you can punctuate a compound sentence with a semicolon. That's totally legit. Another way you can punctuate uh, compound sentences is with a comma and a coordinating conjunction. Those are words like and, but, for, nor. Here's an example. The students wanted indoor recess, but the teachers wanted outdoor recess. Now, comma splices happen when we try and put two independent clauses together and we only use a comma, like this. The students wanted indoor recess. The teachers wanted outdoor recess. Or, my mother loves baking. She just made brownies. Notice we've got the two independent clauses. There's only a comma between them. And commas just aren't strong enough to do that. Semicolons are, but commas are not. If you find yourself with a comma splice and you need to fix it, there are a few ways you can do it. The first way is you can add a coordinating conjunction after your comma, like this. My mother loves baking, so she just made brownies. Another one is to take out the comma and use a semicolon. My mother loves baking, she just made brownies. Another way to fix it would be to make them both sentences. So rather than having a compound sentence, you break them up into their, you break the clauses up into their own sentences. My mother loves baking, period. She just made brownies. And then one last thing you can do, if the second clause that you have expands upon or clarifies the first clause, you could use a colon. My mother baked three different types of brownies today. She loves baking. So that works also. One final tip. Sometimes comma splices are okay. If you're using them for stylistic reasons and your sentences are short and parallel in structure, like this, they came, they saw, they left. So that can work. However, keep in mind that many people do see that as an error. So you need to judge properly when you can use those and when you can't. 
If you're writing anything formal, like a report or a formal email or an essay for your teacher, you should probably avoid them. All right, so now you know about independent clauses, compound sentences, and comma splices. Woohoo! If you'd like to learn more about teaching or learning grammar the easy way, you can check out our website, which is grammarrevolution.com. Thank you so much for asking that awesome question, Jess, and I hope this lesson helped. See you later. Bye.